Hey there, would you like to learn where the rideshare earnings really come from? Well, hello everyone, my name is Russ and welcome back to the Russ Ride channel. On this channel, I'll give you tips on how to improve your earnings and ratings for rideshare companies and delivery companies. In this video, I'm gonna cover six areas, the exciting world of rideshare, surprise where your earnings come from, exceptions to this, how to earn more, my 2019 performance, and finally, why I made this video. So up first, the exciting world of rideshare. You want to hurry up, get signed up for Uber or Lyft or one of the other companies, and get out there and hit the road starting to make money. The work is hard, and it's also a lot of fun. At the end of the day, you've earned some cash, but wait, you do have some expenses, and gas is a big one. So after that, you deduct your expenses and you have your true earnings. Well, guess what? Surprise, surprise. Your earnings are actually paid out of your vehicle. You think that you're getting a paycheck from Uber and Lyft for your time, but actually the money is coming from your vehicle. The 2020 vehicle depreciation rate is now 57.5 cents per mile. So this is an estimate of what it truly costs to operate your vehicle, and this is from the government sources. So it covers your repairs, maintenance, fuel, and tires. So it's the total package. For example, quite commonly when I would drive, I'll go about 200 miles. So 200 times 57.5 is 115. That means at the end of the day, you have to at least have $115 just to cover your expenses. And that's not talking about your profit. Your paycheck is actually cash converted from the life expectancy of your car. You're actually converting your car into cash that you can have right now. And you're hoping that over time you're going to pay out less in repairs than what you bring in, and so you'll make a profit. What this means is that you are not being paid for your time. Normal businesses pay you a rate, an hourly wage. And if you happen to use your vehicle on the job, they're going to pay you for your mileage, which is that depreciation. Rideshare companies are not paying you appropriately for your time, and that includes both vehicle depreciation for you using your vehicle, as well as your time in addition. And other gig economy companies likely are not paying you appropriately either. This is pretty obvious that short term, maybe it'll work for you, but over the long term, this just is not sustainable. You need to know your true expenses in order to know just how much money you're making with rideshare companies. The first major expenses are maintenance, all those vehicle repairs that are unplanned, and also for fuel. You fill up your fuel tank quite often over time that's going to add up. Minor expenses would be for things like dash cams, roadside towing, say music for your passengers, cleaning supplies to keep your vehicle clean, etc. There's a lot of etc. in there for minor expenses. I purposely excluded the income tax. Yes, you should be saving money on the side because the income tax is not taken out of your check, but with all the deductions, odds are pretty high you get that back. So those are excluded from this example of your true expenses. So what are some exceptions? Are there people out there that could really benefit from driving for rideshare companies, no matter what the expenses? Yes, absolutely. So there are people that already have full-time jobs, and if they have long commutes each day, they're already committing to driving that far. So why not leave 30 minutes early, and at the end of the day, come home 30 minutes later and pick up passengers on your way to work and on your way home. That's free money right there. You're already going to be uh, driving that far. You might as well earn some money. Another category of exceptions for uh, people doing rideshare would be those looking for jobs. Guess what? Doing Uber and Lyft when you're unemployed is very helpful because it keeps you from dipping into your savings account too much. And 
you also are going to be transporting a lot of hiring managers throughout the day. So you have a chance to practice your interviewing skills and your 60 second elevator speech when someone asks you, oh, why are you driving Uber? Why are you driving Lyft? And then you can tell them your story. Also, many passengers can refer you to their hiring managers. So you always want to make a good impression on them. Another category of exceptions is small business owners. You have a captive audience in your vehicle, so you have a chance to do networking and advertising with all your passengers. The next category of exceptions are those that need cash in the short term and such as after watching this video, you fully truly realize uh, the true costs of doing rideshare, but you have no better choice and you need some money. So this is a, a great exception. Another exception are those that do the Uber and Lyft car rentals. As long as you're making the monthly payment, I'm sorry, the weekly payment and the fuel costs, you'll be able to maintain that. Now I will caution you doing it part time that is extremely unlikely. I hope that you found this helpful knowing the true expenses of doing rideshare. So how can you do better? Well, something to consider doing food delivery type companies. You're going to put less miles on your vehicle and this will be less wear and tear on your car. So think about that. You need to make less money uh, to get ahead. Another way to earn more is get out of the current category that you're in with rideshare. If it's X, go up to XL, Lux, Black, Select, etc. That's one way that you're going to earn more per mile for your vehicle. This brings up another good point. What about that good deal on your vehicle? You need to know the true costs of how much your vehicle costs to operate, how much money you have into it, how much you could sell it for. So there are ways of getting good deals on vehicles. It could be from private parties, dealer auctions, um, even potentially when the rental companies sell off their vehicles. You need to check around. Keep in mind that when you buy a vehicle, you're going to be having a tax burden put upon you. So you need to do the math and figure that out. If you get poor mileage in your vehicle now, you need to add up your total cost and figure out how much in a year is that going to save you or in two years. I found me personally, after about a year, it's worthwhile to get a different vehicle. And finally, plan how much money you can actually afford to fix your vehicle and don't go above that. Don't be afraid if your vehicle keeps breaking and you've reached that limit, immediately get rid of it and get into a more economical vehicle because you do not want to keep digging the hole deeper, putting money into a car that you're not going to get your money back out of. So I caution you, be very, very careful about dumping too much money into car repairs. Set your limit now, do all the research and plan in advance so that when this um, emotional event happens, you can just react calmly and execute your plan to get a new vehicle and don't look back. I wanted to share some information about how I did in 2019. I have an older Lexus ES330 and it does have a 3.3 liter V6 engine. So you know where this is going concerning gas mileage. It was only eligible for the X category. So not any of the higher categories. And these income and expenses are generalized. They're very close, but just wanted to give you a rough approximation. I drove a total of 25,000 miles. So if you do the math, 25,000 miles times 0.575 gives you $14,375 that I should have earned in order to just cover the expenses for my car. Keep in mind that we're talking about maintenance, uh, tires, fuel, and repairs, all of it. I actually only earned $12,000 in 2019. So next, let's take a look at my expenses. Now, remember that I did earn $12,000 and you could take this as an example. I have $1,200 and $100 bills. So this was my income, $12,000. 
of my expenses, that totaled $7,900. So that's $4,500 for maintenance. Here you go, we'll just round that off and call that five. Just uh, goodbye. That went for maintenance. Then my fuel costs were $3,000, so we'll symbolize that there. And miscellaneous. What did that leave me? Wow, that's not that much, is it, compared to the beginning? So this can symbolize the $4,100 that I did make. Divide that by 52 weeks, and that comes out to $80 per week of profit. If I didn't have all those expenses of uh, mostly the maintenance, that would have upped my rate to $170 per week. But obviously there's gonna be maintenance in every case. Now, did I save money for a newer car? And did I get excited spending it on other needs? All those hours that I worked to profit $80 per week, that hourly rate can't be that high once you know all your true expenses. I made this video to help you. I want you to be able to make an informed decision before you start driving rideshare. That way you can have a firm plan and, and not be naive, know exactly what to expect, know what you're getting into, have a plan to succeed. I am absolutely not against doing rideshare for Uber, Lyft, and the other assorted companies. I did it myself for a good reason. When I was out of work, I uh, was looking for work and I drove Uber and Lyft. It was very helpful and I still drive with them as well because I like making money. Um, my motivation was looking for a job and so that was very informative to come across so many hiring managers. Pay matters. And I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, right? You either profit, you break even, or you lose money. Pay always matters. Next up is flexibility. Flexibility for rideshare companies and gig economy jobs, that's always a given. Think about it. If you got a part-time job somewhere else from a W-2 company, they would expect you to be available. And by being flexible, I can choose if I want to work six or seven days per week, but I don't want to be compelled and forced into it by having a W-2 part-time job in addition to a full-time job. I do thank you for your attention, and I'm glad that I finally was able to make this video highlighting the importance of knowing your true expenses when doing rideshare. If you're new to the rideshare community, before you start driving, use this information and come up with your own plan so that you'll know if you're successful or not. For those that are already are driving, go back and look at your true expenses. I absolutely stand by, you must know your true expenses. And I did try to think of a few exceptions to cover the what ifs. And so please share in the comments below if I missed one of those exceptions and let me know your thoughts overall. All right, until I see you in my next video, have a good day. Bye.